Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 190 of This is the G Podcast. Yes. Yeah, thank you for coming back, y'all. It's hard to believe we're only like 10 episodes away from episode 200. Wow. Let me give it up for that. <laughs> you know, each week we do news, politics, pop culture that piping out to you from the one and only Tanya B. And in this week's episode, Cheeto Jesus and his 18 disciples surrender in Fulton County. Uh, the Newsmaker crew is myself and analyst, political analyst, Harold Michael Harvey, and we will talk about it this week uh, to leave me via on assignment. Uh, Shot Talk this week, season six, man, episode four, re-up. Watch out, Pastor Stanley. Man, I can't believe it, but what's going on? But a whole lot to talk about in Shy this week and Shy News and Tanya B's back with the T. Thank you so much. As always, we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us for another week. Let's get started. What you got in news, Syracuse Mike? News team, assemble! It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. Former President Donald Trump's bond in Fulton County will be $200,000. According to several media reports, that's the amount agreed to by Trump's legal team and Georgia authorities. He'll only have to post $20,000. Part of the deal requires Trump to not intimidate witnesses in the case. On August 14th, Trump and 18 others were indicted on state racketeering and conspiracy charges for allegedly trying to steal the 2020 election. All of the defendants have until Friday to turn themselves in for booking. John Eastman, former President Donald Trump's former lawyer, was booked into the Fulton County Jail on conspiracy and other charges Tuesday. He's often referred to as the mastermind behind the fake elector effort. Outside the courtroom, Eastman told reporters, My legal team and I will vigorously contest every count of the indictment in which I have been named and also every count in which others are named. According to prosecutors, it was Eastman who put together the plan to pressure former Vice President Mike Pence into rejecting the official Democratic electors in Georgia in order to replace them with alternate electors who would support Trump. When asked if he still believes the election was stolen from Trump, Eastman said, No question. No question in my mind. Trump, one of the 19 indicted for allegedly trying to steal the 2020 presidential election, is expected in Atlanta on Thursday. Donald Trump was booked at the Fulton County Jail Thursday after being indicted on RICO charges connected to the 2020 election. Sheriff Pat Labatt said Trump would be treated like any other defendant. However, the former president was in and out of the Fulton Jail in a little more than 20 minutes, far shorter than the hours most people endure when being booked at that jail. When he arrived, Trump was fingerprinted and required to take a booking photo, a mugshot. And when it was released, as expected, the former president started circulating the photo himself via social media, including for the first time in years on Twitter, now known as X. It will no doubt be used as an ongoing fundraising tool. After being booked, Trump's motorcade headed back to the Atlanta airport to head home. And before boarding his plane, he told reporters, He did nothing wrong at all, and we have every right, every single right, to challenge an election that we think is dishonest, that we think it's very dishonest. Several more people indicted in the conspiracy to overturn the Georgia presidential election turned themselves in overnight in Fulton County. This comes hours after Donald Trump turned himself in and became the first former president with a mugshot. There were a number of other developments in the case on Thursday, including a filing by the DA to move the trial date up to October 23rd of this year. A judge signed off on the motion, but only for one of the other defendants in the case. Thanks, Mike, for the headlines. Yeah, Newsmaker Crew is here. Actually, we've got the political analyst, Harold Michael Harvey, in the building. Harold Michael Harvey, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm doing great today, um, Tommy V. How are you today? I'm great, and I can't get away without doing this for you, you know, always. <laughs> I appreciate the applause. You just let me around much. <laughs> I always got to give you your, your, your flowers, your applause, you know, giving to you. Giving to you now. That's what we do. That's what we there do. You, there you go. Have to be but appreciated you know, while you're still here. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and let's go straight into it, Harold Michael Harvey. Um, historic week. Um, it is the, we're, we're just ahead of, as we tape the show, uh, the 60th anniversary of the uh, March on Washington. And what happened in Fulton County this week? Historic. Give me your thoughts. I'm just going to throw it right to you. Uh, I mean, let you frame this. Well, you, you know, um, historically, what we saw in Fulton County uh, this week was the first time that an American, that a former American president uh, had been 
uh, indicted uh, and turned himself in and mugshot it by a state government. Uh, let's then go back 60 years ago. Um, the country was a very segregated country. Uh, there was many places uh, that black people could not live if, uh, in hotels if they traveled through uh, out the summer. Uh, there was restaurants they could not go into and eat. And, and so uh, the guy over my shoulder here, um, C.T. Vivian, uh, was uh, received a letter uh, in early 1963 from Dr. King, and, and King invited him to come to work for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference because they wanted to uh, help uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth, Fred Shuttlesworth in Birmingham, in the Birmingham movement. And so uh, Vivian uh, agreed. He went up and he organized that Birmingham movement. And uh, after getting that organized, King put him in charge of the national uh, affiliates. You know, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference doesn't have individual members. It has affiliate chapters. So Vivian's job was to organize uh, civil rights groups in the various communities throughout the country. Um, organized them so that they would appear on August the 28th, 1963 at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And, you know, it, it is reported that 250,000 um, mostly black Americans appeared at the Lincoln Memorial. It could have been undercounted and, and maybe there were a few more than 250,000. But juxtapose that uh, with 60 years ago, blacks were of fighting for equality and then this past week we see a former president of the United States of America um, being indicted mm. for for trying to uh, lead a coup to uh, steal an election uh, you know from a um, from a candidate who had democratically won uh, the last presidential election you yeah. know so where we were fighting so hard to get into the system in 1963 We've got a president who was indicted in the state of Georgia, you know, for trying to uh, over overthrow the government. So, so you have three. Uh, I, I guess you'd say you've got uh, three different insights or uh, three di three different observations, uh, and, and I'd love for you to, you know, share that. Well, one of the things we saw this week uh, when the former president turned himself in. Uh, you know, he he came to town um, with an agreed upon two hundred thousand dollar bond, and there's several ways that you can post a bond. N number one, you could bring two hundred thousand dollars in cash, pay that cash into the registry of the court, and the court will hold on to your two hundred thousand dollars until the trial is over. And so, if you appear. Uh, every day uh, to court when you are required to appear at the end of that trial, whether you're found guilty or not guilty, the court then cuts your check for the $200,000 that you paid into the register of the court. He could have done that. He's a billionaire. He could have done that. He didn't choose that option. The other way is that you can post a property in the amount of $200,000. Now, one wonders why uh, the former president who is uh, alleged to be a billionaire, uh, didn't put up a property. You know, you, you got more Lago. Surely, there, it, it, even if it's in Convert, it, there's probably two hundred thousand um, uh, dollars. You know, there available uh, that could have been squeezed out of there. Uh, you've got the the place down in in New Jersey, best minister. Uh, you've got Trump Towers in New York. Uh, none of his properties did he put up as collateral. So you could post a collateral, and the same thing happens. Appear to trial, trial is over with. Whether you're found guilty or not guilty, you get the deed to your property back. You just you take the deed, put it into the register of the court. Clerks hold on to the, the deed. And when it's all over with, you or, or there uh, at the end, you get it, your property back. Then the third way is that you can post 10% of the bond amount. You can pay a cash. Um, you, you can pay 10% in cash, which in this case would be $20,000. And it is reported that the president brought $20,000 and paid it to a bondsman 
and the bondsman then took $200,000 and gave it to the court to assure that the uh, former president will return uh, for a trial and every day the trial is, uh, every day that he is supposed to be in, in court. And at the end of the process again, uh, um, whether he's found guilty or not guilty, he doesn't get the $20,000 back. So this billionaire paid $20,000 to bond himself out of jail. Uh, why did he do it? Dropping the bucket. <laughs> it's a drop in the bucket. And so let's say, let's say at the end of the process, he's found guilty. And uh, judge then says, okay, come back in a month and we'll, um, we'll set sentencing. So if he decided he wanted to run, what does he got to lose? Twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, he'll he'll and and by the way, correct me if I'm wrong, but the GOP is paying the freight. They're paying the bills. GOP is paying the bills for what? For his legal defense. No, they're not. He's raising money for his legal defense. Right, but but my point is, all the money he's raising, which should be going toward the campaign, is you know when he's when he's out there asking for money for uh, yeah, legal defense. It. It's that's money that. Well, that's go ahead. His money. That's not the GOP money. Each candidate raises their own money, so the money he's raising is his money. It doesn't go to the GOP coffers and come back to him. But um, I want to make a point. But I want to make a point. If you are the GOP candidate, which he is the lead candidate right now, okay, um, your candidacy is dependent upon the money you raise, and if you are soliciting money at the point of what? What are we? just over a year ahead mm -hmm. of the 2024 election at this point most candidates are requesting money toward their campaign not toward their legal defense so every dime he gets toward legal defense that doesn't go into the campaign hurts the GOP so that's my point I get what you're saying it's not money that's understand. being spent by the GOP I don't understand mm -hmm. how it hurts the GOP but it hurts the GOP. Let me tell you why it hurts the GOP. And this is just my opinion. OK, uh, it, 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 yeah, I know you, I'll give it I'll give it to you for, you know, you, your view on politics. But I'll say this. What I watched or what I saw of the recap of the debate is a waste of time. It's a waste of time, because if if you are <laughs> if you are a candidate running for the presidency of the United States, president of the United States, but you refuse to denounce the can the, the the incumbent then what a, you're it's a waste of time if you if you refuse to say i'm a better candidate than the incumbent then why are you running so my point is he's going to win the primary if he loses uh a case or if he goes to jail then maybe he won't win the primary but then again, you got to debate that because people are asking, you know, it's amazing to me in America right now. We're asking, oh, can a president, can you, can you actually be president with a conviction? What? <laughs> are we even asking? We're asking, we're, 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 we're trying to debate whether or not a president can run the country from jail. Where are we? So my point is this. When, when I say it, it, he's wasting the GOP's money, money is time. Time is, and, and, and right now, uh, the money that he could be collecting toward his campaign to run ads, um, you know, for volunteers, it's all going to him. It's all going, I mean, yeah, okay, I get it. You're absolutely right. It's his Trump website, it's his, it's his merch. It's all that, but they are, you know, he won't even sign uh, a, a document saying that he'll support whoever wins uh, the primary. He won't he even did, sign that. He, he doesn't have to, and in such a strong position in that party, uh, that he didn't have to spend any money to campaign. Right, so, I got you, but it's a, but it's a good faith. It, it's in good faith. So if if I were him, I mean, if I if I were if I were at the head, he's not a personal character who has any kind of good faith in him. But that's my point. That's let me let me. You said it. Okay, that's the point. Mm -hmm. The point is, the GOP uh, has has how do you say it? They have tied their wagon. They made a deal with the devil. That's what they and did. They can't, yeah. and, and they can't get out of it. Period. 
They, I no. mean, they, they've lost all power. So I'll throw it back to you. I just wanted to make that point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I understand. I understand. Okay. So, so but, that's the but, bail bond situation. And uh, wh- where were we? Um, well, yeah, you, we, we talked about the bail bond situation. Um, also, you know, one of the other things I want you to get into uh, is the mugshot. Mugshot? I mean, you know, it, it, this is the first time in, in all of the other indictments that he's had this year. This is the first time he was required to have his mugshot uh, taken and uh, have his um, fingerprints made. And I have to applaud Farney Willis and uh, Sheriff Labatt in Fulton County uh, for not allowing him to weasel out of having his picture taken in his hand and his fingerprints made just like any other citizen who is charged with an offense in Fulton County, Georgia. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you 100 percent on that. And, and, I, and I think uh, I saw an article may have been Politico or Atlantic, the Atlantic, where uh, folks were saying, well, you know, by he's he's going to benefit from the uh, the mugshot and all the haters. His, you know, basically in the face of his haters, but it, it's not about him. It's about the office. It's a, it's about the presidency, you know. Ultimately, it's about the country. Yeah, Trump wins maybe by making money on the mugshot, but the stain he's placed on the office of president is forever. I mean, that's. I mean, I, I just believe. I mean, from here on out, I mean, I, we're going to have to find the right candidate to turn this ship around because the presidency. With him in office or him having been in office is forever stained. And I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Well, I mean, you know, he's put a stain on the office just by um, his presence and his behavior the four years that he was in the office. And uh, that's his record. And so uh, nothing wipes away uh, that record. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the country, I don't know that we, I, when you say we have to find another candidate. I, I mean, I'm not looking on that side for a candidate. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not looking you know. from a GOP standpoint. I'm looking from a, a candidate, whoever's in the office going forward. You know, I, I know where your you know, our loyalties may stand, you know, in terms of party. But when it comes down to finding a candidate who can right the ship and at least get us back into talking about issues and not their individual legal problems you know we we have to well, get this thing back on track i mean we, we we've been in nixon world too long well you know i i uh, in the the little uh view that i had of the debate you know the republicans would be smart if they would select um uh nikki haley and tim scott in that order uh as their ticket at least you would get two sensible reasonable people uh, who can talk about the issues now? I, you know, there's virtually nothing that I agree with either one of those candidates with, but at least they are sensible, reasonable people uh, who can debate uh, policy issues that affect that affect the country. Um, you know, going this route of um, the former president who has been indicted four times and and then was impeached impeached twice when he was in office. Um, the only thing Donald Trump can do if he if his political career is not ended, it will end democracy in America as we know it. Uh, another d- Trump uh, term in in the uh, Oval Office will um, will bring in what you know some people call the New World Order, uh, but but who would have thought that the New World Order would have uh, been brought in by a character such as uh, Don John Trump. Yeah. Uh, but if his political uh, career is not ended, uh, you know, the dem- democracy and the uh, ties and alliances that this country has uh, around the world will mm-hmm. be forever uh, shattered and it will take a, a long time to get it back on track again. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I'll, I'll say this, um, and, and I agree with you on Nikki Haley. I completely disagree with you on Tim Scott. Uh, If anybody, I think you're going to have maybe possibly I agree with Nikki Haley. And uh, even though he is a 
a radical within the party right now. Uh, I, I, if anybody, you know, I think it's going to have to be uh, Christie, Chris Christie. Uh, but 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 Tim Scott, and 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 it's sad. Here's a sad thing about, and, and I'm not I'm not saying this uh, because you chose them both, but they're both from South Carolina, which is not the uh, model state <laughs> you want running the United States, because if all it's almost like if you took all the policies from Florida and made them national policies, we'd be in trouble. And, Ooh, and wait, I don't, wait a minute now. I, no, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm not saying that's a winning ticket or that should be a winning oh, no, ticket. No. But yeah, I think okay. if you if you got two people who, who would, you look at what was on the stage, yeah, that was nothing on the stage, and the only two people on the stage that made sense were the two people from South Carolina. Uh, you yeah. know, Christy is just he, he's about grievance. His whole aim is to knock Trump off, and 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 Trump, you know, and and that's probably is an honorable uh, thing to do, but. When you talk about people who have been at the federal level and worked in government at the federal level, those are the two people who can articulate um, the concerns of the country better than anything else that was on that stage, including the former vice president. You know, but but um, you know, I, I'm not far from me to tell the Republicans who they should pick on that ticket, but but I think if they want to get their party away from Trump and back on solid ground so they can begin to rebuild the party, you know, that would be the group that they would need to uh, to work with to do that. Uh, Christie couldn't do that because he's got grievances. Um, the the other um, Indian candidate um, can't oh. do that. Oh, he, I mean, he, he's I mean, honestly, he's a shock candidate, if anything. Right. Um, and and, uh, you know, if you talk about, you know, people talk about left wing, he's he's far, far, far right. And, and the other thing, and, I, and I'll say this because I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the mm -hmm. debate. You, you've got much, you know, m much more to say uh, <laughs> and, and, and things that are more sensible than spending time on these candidates. But I will say the GOP debates a waste of time. And, and as long as the candidates aren't willing to denounce Trump. And they're willing to go along with him and, and, and out, you know, excuse my language, kiss his ass. You know, if, if, if you can't debate, if you can't tell America that you are better than the incumbent, then why run? He owns them. Well, I'm not saying the incumbent, but the former GOP, you know, the former mm -hmm. Republican president, because the incumbent is uh, is Joe Biden. But I'm just saying, if you can't say that you're better than Trump, then you shouldn't be running. Uh, they're, they're afraid to denounce him on stage. The only people who are afraid or not afraid are, are is, is Asa and Christy. Those are the only two. The only time that Nikki Haley stood up w was when she challenged Trump on his fiscal spending, on his spending. That's the only time she really attacked him and went in using his name. But uh, and, it, and, and, and it doesn't mean um, I'm not saying uh, he will win the presidency. I mean, honestly, uh, I don't think I, I think Trump's legal issues are insurmountable at this point. I don't think he'll win. the He can't beat Biden at this point. It's Biden's election to lose. It is at this point. Uh, it's simp it, but, but what it does mean when I hear Christie attempt to make a stand against Trump, I think he is making an attempt to move his party back to sensible ground so we can have real conversations about the you know the the party the two parties and differentiate the two parties that's where i think christie when he attacks trump is attempting to do but the country is so brainwashed and and gas and gaslit right now there's no moving away from it and i'll give you final thoughts on on this um on on, on this on the whole fulton county situation and and the debate go ahead well um I don't know. I don't. I don't know that in order for the Republican Party to recover from Trump, do they have to? Somebody has to go out and beat up on Trump. You know, somebody just no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying beat up. All, all I'm saying is, you know, if you can't win against the the form, the guy in the lead, unless you differentiate 
yourself and say that you're better than the guy who's leading. As long as you keep saying he's a great man, he was a great candidate, and he's 60 points ahead of you, I mean, what chance do you stand on oh, beating him? So you, I, you've I, got I, I to you you got to differentiate. And these guys aren't willing to, di to differentiate themselves because they're afraid. Yeah, That's my point. My point is not just I to go out. You, but, but honestly, you got to you got to say something. You got to differentiate yourself. If you're not going to differentiate yourself, yourself from Trump, then why even run? Why run? Well, I guess it comes down to your earlier comment it is mm -hmm. that the Republican debates are a waste of time. It is. It's a waste uh, of time. It, and it's, it's a waste of time. At this point, it's a foregone conclusion that Donald Trump will win the Republican uh, primary and will yep. be the Republican nominee. So uh, all of this is just entertainment until we get to, um, you know, next summer this day. Yeah, it, it's it, but but I think if you if they're going to do it, you know what I mean? If, if you're going to do this, then do it. Give yourself a chance. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? At least you, you, you can't help them. You know they are too afraid to give themselves trying, a chance. I'm not trying to help. <laughs> you, <laughs> they're, they're they're stuck where they are. I agree. I agree. Hey, we love your thoughts. Go to castropolis.net. Choose the people poll. Uh, again, castropolis.net. Choose the people poll. Leave us a voice. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you close this. I'm gonna give you the final word. Well, I'll well, give you the final word, Harold Michael well, Harvey. HaroldMichaelHarvey.com, by the way. HaroldMichaelHarvey.com. <laughs> go there for all things Harold Michael Harvey. Go ahead, Mr. Pick, Harvey. Pick up a book when you go there, too. I've written five books. You know, Pick up one of them and um, help me out a little bit. But in, in any event, there, there's, there are two other things. I'll, I'll be as quickly as I can. There are two other things I noticed oh. from this week. Number one, uh, the day before Trump turned himself in, he changed attorneys. Uh, he changed from Field into um, Steve Sadow, and Steve Sadow is a is one of the state's outstanding attorneys, no question about it. But he his reputation has been built uh, not on his trial work, but on the on his ability to negotiate a favorable outcome for his client. So it causes me to question. Uh, this this moniker that Trump came out with after he walked out of the Rice Street Jail is never surrender, because he's hired an attorney who is skilled at negotiating favorable terms for his client, which tells me that at some point in time, uh, it suggests to me that Trump may uh, seek a deal before this process is finished, and if that is his strategy. He, he brought on the perfect attorney in this state uh, to, to uh, negotiate a favorable outcome for him. So, number one, watch that down the road. Number two, on the bond issue, watch down the road whether or not he turns himself in if he's found guilty. And number three, the other third thing that stood out in my mind was that a group of uh, people in the black community as the Trump caravan rolled through uh, ML King. You had young, uh, poor blacks standing on the sidewalk uh, chanting, free Donald Trump, free Donald Trump, free Donald Trump. So this, this cult of personality that he has used to uh, infect uh rednecks and poor whites he he has been successful in reaching down into the black poor who have been left out of the system uh by the the two uh, parties in the past and they feel some kinship with trump now that he's had his mugshot made many of the people uh, i would imagine who was on that side while cheering him um either were or knew someone who had had that mugshot taken over at Rice Street Jail. And so it sort of makes them feel like um, they're just like Trump. <laughs> and so what possibly could happen here is, I don't know if, if, if uh, Trump or anyone on this group of people who call themselves niggas for Trump, if they are in a position to organize that community and get the vote out, uh, but some, some you gotta watch. You gotta watch that because uh, young, disaffected black people 
or chanting the, the Trump mantra. And I was surprised to see that this week, but that's the reality in which we're living in. Yeah. Go to HaroldMichaelHarvey.com. Again, HaroldMichaelHarvey.com for all things Harold Michael Harvey. Uh, again, thanks uh, the uh, news crew. Our typical news crew is not here. The newsmaker crew, Talib and I, uh, are on assignment this week. So uh, we appreciate you, Harold Michael Harvey, for stepping in. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, and sir. let's take a break, and we'll come back with the tea from Tanya B. Again, thank you so much, Harold Michael Harvey. Have a great day. More This Is The G Podcast after the break. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Tommy B from This Is The G Podcast. We are now halfway through 2023. And if you've been thinking about starting your own podcast uh, in 2024, I'd love to have a chat with you. The Castropolis Podcast Network is currently accepting new shows. And if you have a clear vision and a unique voice, let's get in touch. Reach out to me at info at castropolis.net or visit the website castropolis.net. Simply click on the Contact Us button. So go to castropolis.net, click on Contact Contact us and just leave me a message. I'm Tommy B from This Is The G Podcast, and I can't wait to help you start your very own podcast journey today. Now then, children, it's time for tea. It's tea time, y'all. Sipping the tea with Tanya B. Yes, yes, yes. It's me. It's me. It's your girl, Tanya B. So it is time to sip this G podcast tea right here on This Is The G Podcast. Let me just get right to it. I got a lot to tell you in a little bit of time. I want to say congratulations to Serena Williams and her hubby, Alexis, for the birth of their second baby girl. Do we see a future play date on the horizon? Rihanna just had a baby boy. I said it was a girl, but it's a boy. So Serena's got two girls. Rihanna's got two boys. And then don't forget, Sierra's got her little bundle of joy due later on this year and speaking of Sierra you know she's now an uh, entrepreneur she owns her own independent record label and she dropped an album and it's got some gems on it I gotta give it to her she went for you know those of y'all that want to do mumble mouth rapping she got little baby then for those of y'all who want some real R&B she gives you that and she also has a duet with Chris Brown let's talk about Halle Berry now you know it's been almost 10 years since the dust up and split up with her third husband Olivier Martinez the father of her son Maceo do you know it's been eight years and that divorce just got finalized Much like her daughter's father, Aubrey, whatever his name is. Anyway, Tommy B, she's got to pay both of them $100,000 a year in child support and take care of all the education, the medical, you know, all all the money for their activities. And even though Olivier signed a prenup, you know what? She still got to pay him another 4.2% of any income she makes over $2 million. So inquiring minds want to know, will she marry her current boo thang singer Van Hunt? I say, Hallie, don't do it relationships are cool marriage does not work for you so i hope you know i hope she does the right thing okay neil long i guess she feels she's doing the right thing because she has now filed for full custody of the son she shares with the disgraced messy former nba coach well current former Celtics coach now he's somewhere in texas on Ime udoka and if you want to know why kevin hart's in a wheelchair here is why He tore up his lower abdomen trying to compete with a professional athlete doing a 50-yard dash. So, Kevin, you shouldn't have tried it. Get well soon. And Tommy B, do you know it's been 50 years since Marvin Gaye dropped the iconic song and album, Let's Get It On? Yes, it has been 50 years. Well, his estate is releasing a special deluxe edition of that album with 20 additional songs. And there's this new singer named October London. They're calling him the rebirth of Marvin. How about we just get a rebirth of R&B music? Mm -hmm. Now, I got to wonder... How is R. Kelly's last remaining, whatever she calls herself, Joycelyn Savage, able to live? Because that stash money is running out, baby. Now, any money that R. Kelly generates from music royalties, a judge has ruled it must go to the victims who were part of his sex abuse situation Mm -hmm. anyway after that lifetime expose radio station stopped playing r kelly's music and many songs he wrote for other people like michael jackson uh you know and so many others and i wanted this the fact that the money's going to these sex abuse survivors i wonder if that changes people's minds because a lot of people just shut him all the way down Uh i'm one of them anyway you know the dumb donkey of the week tommy b has got to be this judge that has denied a restraining order and protection to Rapper Big Sean and singer Janae Aiko, they have a new baby. This stalker that they have broke in their home and the judge said, nope, 
No restraining order, no protection. What has to happen before they get protection? Let something happen. I think that judge will be sued. Also getting sued, the creators of the streaming show, P-Valley. They're being sued by singer Nikki Gilbert of Brownstone. Remember, if you love me, say it in Grapevine. Well, she says they stole her idea and a copyright expert agrees with her that her play, Soul Kittens Cabaret, very closely resembles P-Valley. So time will tell and we will see. Oh my goodness. You know what? This whole thing about these boy bands, it's, it's really kind of jacked up. I got to say that because now NSYNC and Justin Timberlake just announced that they are going to be reuniting for the first time in about, what, 20 years and releasing new music. Now, all the other pop boy bands, pop music boy bands, that is from back in the day, have jumped on the bandwagon. The sad part about it, the R&B male groups, the R&B boy bands have not had that same opportunity. And I just want to say, what's up with that? I also want to close on somewhat of a, it's a concerning note. Now, those of us of a certain age remember in the 90s when a singer with a voice that has yet to be matched came out of Metro Philadelphia, multi-talented, multi-octave range. Her name, Rochelle Farrell. Now, she sang back up for everybody from Lou Ross to Patti LaBelle and Phyllis Hyman and worked with Quincy Jones and then some. She had a minute where she was the it girl. Now, she's most well known for her duet with Will Downing. Nothing has ever been this good. Now, she's one of those singers, S-A-N-G-E-R-S. And you know, the thing about a lot of artists, when they don't work, like with COVID, the money stops. When you get sick and you have no medical insurance, it becomes a huge problem. So let's just send prayers up for Rochelle Farrell. A GoFundMe has been started to help cover her current health wellness and life related hardships and that's really you know that's sad if all these artists that she's saying background for and people she put on and whatnot put some money in the pot she wouldn't have a problem but a lot of people when they're struggling they don't want to talk about it so if you just google the Rochelle Farrell fund you can donate and again this is a sad reality for so many R&B artists and we wish her all the best that's all I got ain't got no more it's your girl Tanya B we sip this tea each and every Sunday right here on this is the G podcast and if you happen to miss it go to the website but go to the YouTube channel that's where the fun starts go to the YouTube channel and check us out all right y'all have a great week Labor Day is next weekend can you believe that the unofficial end of the summer be kind be safe and do not discount what the CDC is saying about this new situation with the COVID y'all we do not want to dial it back and spend Thanksgiving and Christmas in the house alright that's all I got ain't got no more alright it's back to you Tommy B what you watching this week Tommy B thanks Tanya B for that tea let's do some shy talk episode 4 season 6 is re-up and, and you know the beauty of the shy is that creator Lena Waite utilizes different directors to craft the vibe of each episode. And, and this is an episode of Discovery. Duda discovers the feds are on to him and his grip on the city may not be as strong as he thinks. Emmett and Keisha are discovering adulting ain't what it's all cracked up to be. The men of the shot make a discovery in the men's circle that there's strength in numbers and that they can talk through their problems. The boys continue to grow. Papa and Kenya make contact. Jake is developing his business chops. Kevin, well, (laughs) we just don't know yet. Lastly is Pastor Stanley in peril. We've been talking about who's going to get off first. And boy, he came in strong as the lead this week. I'll just leave it at that. Good to see Candy Burroughs return as Jocelyn and Jill Marie Jones of Girlfriends fame. Makes a steamy, and I do mean steamy, debut as Duda's new girl, Bianca. So many layers to this show. By the time we get to the Midway Point episode eight, expect several bombs to drop. I welcome your thoughts. Hit me up at castropolis.net. That's Shy Talk for the week. I'm Tommy B. Let's take a break and we'll come back with the people poll from one of our listeners.
Hi, this is A.G. Hatcher Jr., and I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and happy to be in our nation's capital today commemorating the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington. As Reverend Al Sharpton says, we're not just commemorating, but we're continuing the march for social justice, voting rights, equal rights, the thing that Dr. King led and fought so hard for and ended up paying the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, It is wonderful out here to see such a diverse group, and the cause is needed now just as much as it was 60 years ago. So the work, our work uh, is not done and I'm happy to be part of this day. Thank you so much, AG, for sharing your insight on the People Poll. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, Don't forget, you can share your thoughts at castropolis.net. That's castropolis.net. Go there and just hit the People Poll button. And as always, big thanks to Syracuse Mike, Tanya B. Vi, Tlaib, author and political analyst, Harold Michael Harvey. Thank you so much to the crew, Millennial Nick, uh, Lady J, Regia, Music by k all those who help make it happen every single week. And, uh, you know, every Sunday we do our taping and we go live at 6 p.m. Uh, with the results. 6 p.m., you can stream us first. Links in our social media in the bio. Go to castropolis.net. Don't forget, y'all, share it with a friend. Don't, don't cost you nothing. Don't cost you nothing. Just go ahead and share it. Uh, you know, my PSA for this episode, sadly enough, uh, our prayers go out uh, to our friends in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, as we tape this episode in the middle of taping it, an individual with disgusting ideology of hate, uh, some say that doesn't exist in America, walked into a Dollar General and gunned down three black people. Uh, just another reminder, as we celebrate the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington, this week that the U.S. still has a long way to go. We do. And with that, episode 190 is in the can. Have a great week. Peace and power to the people.